Cool. Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio up here at Sundance. Um, Prashant, uh, congratulations on having Amrika here. Um, so let, let's start at the beginning, I guess. The, the thatched roofs, the goats, all that sort of stuff. Tell me about like, where the heart of this movie is set and where you actually shot it. Okay, so the, um, the, the film takes place, starts off in a tiny, isolated village up in the mountains where nothing takes place. Um, you know, time sort of stands still in 1975 in India. Um, it's a region called, it's a fictitious village um, that we set roughly in Madhya Pradesh, um, which is a, you know, a part of India. Um, so we shot the entire thing. Um, we created the village on the edge of sort of this uh, cliff with a 360 degree view, uh, mainly because of the time period. And it's really hard to find um, things that are unchanged. Um, so we shot the first part of the, the film in this tiny village. And the second part was in Mumbai. Okay, cool. Um, and for you, you know, you grew up in Mumbai? Actually, I didn't. You didn't? Um, I was a child of a diplomat, so I moved every three years. We lived pretty much everywhere except for India. Yeah. Ironically. And so how was it for you kind of coming back to that place and yeah. setting up a sense of place there? Was it strange? Or? Uh, well, for me, it was great because um, so the time period is the 80s uh, in the film. And uh, as a child, you know, I lived everywhere, and I would always come back to India in the summer um, and spend three or four months there. Yeah. So it was great to be able to recreate, you know, the, the India of my childhood, because India's changed, obviously, so much since then. It's opened up. It's, uh, um, uh, you know, the economic boom and all that. So it was nice to be able to recreate all those things, you know, whether it's the the music or the advertising. Or yeah, so you talk about childhood and obviously yeah. all parents have expectations of their kids yeah. and we all have our own dreams. Sure. So for you, uh, what, was, what were your parents' expectations of you? What did they want you to be? Um, well, I think, you know, they were initially quite keen that I do something very, you know, safe and you know, reliable. So I actually have an electrical engineering degree. I'm the world's worst electrical engineer. Um, I took the same class three times and got a D each time. Um, but anyway, so I, I started off as an electrical engineer, and um, um, and you know, after about fifteen or sixteen years of doing it, I uh, you know, I just one day realized that you know, time was running out. Yeah. Um, and that's when I switched to film. And I think now they're very, very happy that I've you know been able to find something. Um, but I think like all Indian parents at the time, they were you know very keen on me doing something safe. And, and so, so at, what point, at what point did you actually, there's, a, there's one thing about having the dream, but there's sure. that other thing about committing to it. Yeah. So what was the motivating factor? What was the catalytic moment that you were like, okay, this is the moment? A little age, man, I think. You know, it's like, I think it was more like, you know, wow, I'm, I'm like 32, 33, and you know, the last time I looked, I was 17. Um, so we you know. I better get to it now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really didn't make a decision. I just kind of said, okay, I'm going to try. You know, I took a little class in film. Everybody said, you know, if you, if you want to learn how to make films, go, go make a film. So I made a very tiny film, uh, which hopefully you'll never be able to find anywhere. Um, and, you know, slowly, little by little, I kind of got into, yeah. into filmmaking. Uh, obviously, Michelle Satter has a, has a thank you credit on the film as well. Uh, yeah. um, the whole Sundance Institute yeah. experience. Uh, like, talk to me a little bit about what that was like. So those guys are, I mean, you know, on the border of being saints. You know, there's something like almost their generosity and selflessness is, is, um, is just so amazing. So I had sent the script. They were doing a lab in India, the first one. So I had sent the script to, you know, obviously didn't expect anything. And... It got chosen, um, and then they follow the same kind of model that they do here, which is basically getting all these amazing people to completely destroy your script um, over one week in a in a beautiful Syrian setting. Um, and then where's that? that where's, where's that? So they they actually came to Mumbai, yeah, um, and they took us out to a resort, like you know, a couple hours outside of Mumbai. Yeah. Um, but then you know they're amazing. They helped me you know develop the script. They also kind of. Um, helped us, you know, uh, with a rough cut, you know, I think I might have shown them the film at least 20 times, bothered them about the tiniest little things. So, I mean, anybody who's got a script, it's an amazing, amazing. Is that why Audrey Wells and Guillermo Arriaga have mentioned exactly. as well? Are they Were they part of that process? Yeah, they were my creative mentors. In the That's lab. pretty amazing. It is, yeah. Yeah. It is. Was there, um, were you, like, growing up and kind of having this passion for film, this, mm -hmm. but, uh, like, not yet acting on it, yeah. what were those kind of marquee 
filmic moments were they Indian films were the films yeah. that you kind of half make fun of during the, the movie <laughs> as well about how yeah. you know huge some of these stars are and how everyone kind of rallies around them um, or was it kind of more American or mainstream fair so it was very divided because I lived in places like Switzerland Syria Zambia Austria um, so through my childhood like until about 12 or so I watched Bollywood films and I loved them um, and then we were in Zambia and we didn't have much access to to film, you know, so I watched, uh, you know, I think I'm, I think w the only VHS we had was Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I watched a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. um, so I had no real, like, uh, independent cinema or art house exposure um, until I got to college. And, you know, as, as I was saying, I was an engineer. Yeah. And I was in the middle, I was in the Midwest, in like Indiana, in an engineering college, miserable. And there was a video store next to me. And um, I think the first thing I rented was like Michael Lee's Naked. And it just oh, kind wow. of stunned me. And, the only thing I had to do was watch films, so so I think that's where I really kind of grew to, to love film. It's like those dark years in the Midwest yeah. during college. So, so um, people have dreams to go to different places. Obviously, the characters uh -huh. in the film, uh, for them, America is seen as this kind of golden place uh, where, where uh, I think literally, right, you say like the cows, cows poop gold. gold. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. for you living in Berlin, mm -hmm some time like some of the time half the time um what made you move there what was that decision uh you mean berlin yeah um well berlin at the time so now i'm between mumbai and mostly in mumbai because of the, the film but uh, berlin is just an amazing city it's a great combination of um you know it's artistic it's green it's spacious the, it's international it's um it's really an amazing city. Have you found a good filmmaking community there that you belong to, or is it more just, you know, are you the, the one person amongst your friends who's the <laughs> filmmaker? Uh, so um, a lot of our uh, crew was um, based in Berlin. So the editor, um, Patricia Romel, and the editors, Patricia Romel and Zadia Box are based there. Yeah. Sound designer is based there, sound mixer. Um, so we did a lot of our post-production there. And they've all become, you know, almost like family. So yeah, so, so talk to me about the first time you met both um, Suraj Sharma and Tony Rivalori. <laughs> okay. Obviously, Suraj, everyone knows from Life of Pi, sure. which shot all over the world, yeah. um, and took him from being yeah. just another kid to yeah. this kind of phenomenon, yeah. um, all the way through the Oscars. And yeah. Tony, of course, is in Grand Budapest Hotel, which yeah. is also getting a lot of attention now around Oscar time. Sure. Um, so what, it is, what was it about those kids and when, when did you meet them and where? So with Suraj, um, it's my producer who first suggested that, that I, um, I talk to him about uh, the lead role. And I'd seen Life of Pi and of course I'd loved it, but you know, completely different world, completely different performance. Complete, um, so I wasn't too sure. But then we flew down to Bangalore and we met with him and he just had these kind of very, he's a very sensitive guy, um, he's a very intuitive, sensitive guy, and he had all the right questions uh, about the character motivations, he, he just, it, you know, I could see it coming alive, and at that point, you know, right from there on, I, I really couldn't imagine anyone else. You know, Ang Lee sort of picked him out of 5,000 kids. Amazing. Um, they were s s searching all over, the, all over the country. And when you work with him, you really kind of get why. Yeah. You know, he's, he's amazing, he's hardworking. He's, um, he also demands like an automatic empathy. Absolutely. I mean, everybody on set loved him. Yeah. You know, he was, um, and Tony was kind of a funny story because I, um, I was looking for Lalu, the character, mm -hmm. and I wasn't having much success. And then the trailer for Grand Budapest Hotel came online. And I, um, I thought he was Indian. Uh, because Wes Anderson sometimes casts, in, you know, Indian characters. Yeah. So I was convinced he was Indian. And I looked him up and I was like, oh no, he's Guatemalan. <laughs> um, but Amalan lives in, in LA, but I sent him the script anyway, and I um, you know, thought let's take a chance, and um, and he he loved the script, and so we kind of uh, yeah jumped in the journey. But the moment I saw that that trailer, I couldn't really imagine anyone else. He's got a very particular way about him. That, yeah. yeah. Again, like it's like it's funny because the characters they both seem to represent the guys somewhat. It's yeah. like Suraj you just look at that face and it's like, it's kind of one of those things that you can imagine a mother just hugging him all the time. Sure. And then with Tony, it's just like, he just has that comedic yeah. appeal. Yeah. And they got along so well. You know, shooting with leads who are that age is a lot of fun. You know, they, they just liven up the set and they're like blabbering away until you yell action and then all of a sudden they switch into uh, 
as a character. They're, they're really good. And whose company is Samosa Stories? So Samosa Stories is, um, is the company of uh, Swati Shetty, who's our um, producer. Yeah. Producer of um, just a great name for a production company. Yeah, it's a theater snack in India, and I believe it's also made its way onto the Oscar menu. It know? has. So, yeah. <laughs> Wolfgang Park has picked it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was very cool. And yeah. so if you had uh, unlimited, kind of a hypothetical question, if you had mm -hmm. unlimited, or two of them, if you had an unlimited budget, unlimited resources, and could travel anywhere in the world to make a film, yeah. where would you go? Wow. Um, I think that... I, I, I don't know, I think that seems like a sort of frightful scenario to be in. You know, I think it's the constraints really that kind of force you to to do your best work. So I kind of like the, the constraints. I, I'd probably stay exactly where I was and do nothing, you know. In, in so that. if I told you you had to shoot in one city in the world. <laughs> had to shoot in yeah. one city. Um, you know, I, I spent some time in Africa growing up. Um, I lived in Sudan and Zambia and it's amazing. Um, so I'd love to shoot somewhere in Africa. Uh, Lagos, I don't know if you, it's, 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 um, I have memories of it as a kid, just being so overwhelmed by the, the masses of people and color, and so uh, I would probably want to shoot one of those. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Congratulations <laughs> on the film again. Thank you. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks.